Hi, and welcome back to our channel Summaries of a Bookworm. Your number one place for all who need or like to listen to book summaries. Let's start with the book summary of today. Almost everyone experiences seasickness during the rough English Channel crossing. Some passengers become tipsy and take to their berths. The bright young people, led by Agatha Runcible and the effeminate Miles Malpractice, bandage themselves and hope for the best. Mrs. Melrose Ape, a famous female evangelist traveling with her troupe of singing angels, bullies a few hardy souls into singing hymns in the smoking room. Father Rothschild, S.J., ponders the saint's sufferings. A young writer named Adam Fenwick Symes is on his way home to marry Nina Blunt. To his chagrin, Dover customs officials seize and burn the manuscript of his autobiography he wrote while in Paris. Almost as bad as Agatha's case, in which she is stripped and searched after being misidentified as a notorious jewel smuggler. Adam's publisher in London offers him a contract to write a novel, but with no advance in royalties. Adam is unsure how he will get married with only 10 shillings to his name. Fortunately, he's staying at Shefford's Hotel. If she likes her guests, Lottie Crump, the proprietress who bullies kings and advises members of parliament, is unconcerned about bills. The majority of her guests are inebriated. One young man loses a thousand pounds in a foolish bet with Adam. Adam calls Nina and tells her they can marry right away, but before he leaves the hotel, a drunken major convinces him to bet on Indian runner in the November handicap. The major then vanishes, and Adam is forced to call Nina again and inform her that their wedding will be postponed. Archie Schwartz's costume party is attended by Adam and Nina. Some of the bright young people leave the affair to go to Lottie's for a drink. Judge Skimp, an American visitor, is amusing. Despite the champagne used to bathe her forehead, one young woman dies after falling while swinging on a chandelier. The party is about to end when Miss Brown invites everyone to her house, which happens to be number 10 Downing Street, because her father is Prime Minister Sir James Brown. Agatha stays all night because she forgot her own house key. When she walks out the front door the next morning, she finds reporters and photographers waiting for her. Reports of midnight orgies at number 10 Downing Street result in a change of government, and Mr. Outrage, whose dreams are filled with visions of naked Japanese women, becomes the new Prime Minister. On Nina's advice, Adam contacts Colonel Blunt to inquire about funding for his daughter's wedding. The colonel generously hands him a thousand pound check. Adam is overjoyed and drives Nina to a country hotel where they spend the night. He is so overjoyed that she does not tell him until the next morning that her father, an absent-minded movie fan, signed Charlie Chaplin's name to the worthless check. The wedding has been rescheduled once more. Baron Balcairn, a gossip columnist known as Mr. Chatterbox, shows up in disguise at Lady Metroland's party for Mrs. Ape after the host refuses to send him an invitation. He is accused of spying on a secret political meeting between Lord Metroland, Father Rothschild, and Mr. Outrage. He decides to give his paper the scoop of scoops by reporting a sensational but false account of indiscreet confessions made by aristocrats converted by the evangelist. Then he returns home, turns on the gas, places his head in the oven, and dies quietly. Adam transforms into Mr. Chatterbox. Meanwhile, Daily Excess is being sued for libel as a result of Balcairn's hoax. Mrs. Ape confirms the story in an exclusive interview before departing with her angels to boost religion in Oberammergau, Germany. Adam is forced to invent fictitious people for his column because he is not allowed to mention the names of those suing the paper. Among his creations are a man named Ginger, a fashion model and well-known member of society. When he finally meets Captain Eddie Littlejohn, also known as Ginger, he is taken aback. Adam and Nina run into him at the November Handicap, where Indian runner wins at 35 to 1 odds. Adam spots the drunken major a few minutes after the race, but he vanishes before Adam can push his way through the crowd to collect his winnings. Nina is assured that Adam will speak with her father again. He discovers the colonel is working on a film based on the life of John Wesley and is too preoccupied to pay attention to Adam. During his absence, Nina writes his column, which includes a mention of green bowlers, a fashion item that is frowned upon in the daily excess. As a result, Adam loses his job, and Miles takes on the role of Mr. Chatterbox. Miles accepts the position because he requires the money. His brother, Lord Throbbing, unexpectedly returns from Canada and kicks Miles and his shady boxing and racing buddies out of Throbbing House. Adam, Agatha, Miles, and Archie Schwert attend auto races, where they wear brassards indicating that they are part of the crew of Car 13. Between heats, Adam runs into the drunken major again, who, after assuring him that his £35,000 are safe in the bank, lends him £5 to place a bet. When the driver of car 13 is incapacitated by an Italian competitor, Agatha, 
who wears a brasser designating her as a spare driver, takes the wheel. Careening madly, she establishes a lap record before leaving the track and driving across the country until she crashes into a monument. She is discovered wandering around dazed and dies in a nursing home, still believing she is driving in a spinning world of speed and sound. Adam does not have enough money to pay Lottie's bill of 78 pounds and 16 pence and 2 pence. When he meets Ginger Littlejohn, he borrows that amount and promises that Ginger can marry Nina in exchange. Ginger is called up for military service shortly after Ginger and Nina return from their honeymoon. Colonel Blunt hosts Adam and Nina for Christmas. The Wesley film is finished, and the colonel is too preoccupied with showing it as a Christmas treat to notice that his supposed son-in-law is a writer he met previously as Fenwick Symes. On Christmas Eve, they learn that war has been declared. During a lull in the fighting, Adam runs into his drunken major again on a blasted battlefield. The officer, who claims to be a general, announces that he has lost his division. Adam is not as badly off, he only loses one platoon. The general offers to pay the £35,000 on the spot, but Adam believes the money will be useless. They do find the general's car, which contains a case of champagne and one of Mrs. Ape's singing angels, Chastity. Adam consumes some of the wine and falls asleep, leaving the general and Chastity to amuse themselves. Thank you for listening to our book summary. I hope we sparked your interest in the book. Please let us know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. Do you want to listen to more book summaries? Subscribe to us and you will get a notification every time we publish a new summary. Bye bye and see you next time.